Welcome! This video shows how I made a folding work table for X-Carve. So I've been looking for a spot to put my new X-Carve CNC machine. And as I look around I have some ceiling room but not a ton without interfering with the lights. I've got this big garage door that's sort of in the way for putting it over here. I definitely don't have floor space with all the stuff I got under tarps here. And I definitely don't want it under the garage door because it drips which is why I need the tarps. So I've measured it out. I can just barely fit a hinged X-Carve workbench in that corner without interfering with that man door for coming into the garage. So I'm going to move the stuff out of the way and get going. Now since this fold-down X-Carve table is not actually a workbench and it's not like I'm going to be planing wood or something at it, uh, it can be a little bit lower than a workbench. I'm actually going to put it at about the same height as my dust collection hose and this foldable work table. And one of the benefits of having plywood on the walls instead of drywall is I can, I made pocket holes and I'm just going to run the screws right into the wall. This is three quarter inch plywood on the wall. And I like this level because it keeps the outlets far enough above that the router's not going to shoot shavings right into them. They're just high enough that that shouldn't be a problem. And these braces will help support this shelf. Alright, check it out. Both side supports are in and this thing is pretty strong. So now I'm building the table that x -Carp will sit on. It's actually upside down. This is the underside. I'm going to put the legs on here. And I'm also putting on these braces that are going to run approximately the perimeter. And these will help stiffen the whole table. Uh, I've run these over the jointer. They're perfectly flat, so they're going to hold my table flat and it won't deflect when it sees any force on it. And hopefully that will hold the whole CNC machine flat. So here's the simple table I built to hold the X-Carve. This is going to fold down and when it folds down these legs are going to come out and I will put levelers on them. I just need to go and buy the hardware because I don't have any just sitting around. Alright, i got it now preliminarily attached to the wall. I don't have my leveling feet on yet so it's still not quite horizontal. Uh, but basically this is going to go up on the wall like this. We're going to put some stops up here that this is going to hit, and also that way I can latch it, put some, uh, some stops with a latch. And what's good is that my door still opens just fine, still got clearance for that. And uh, it comes up the wall pretty far, but actually when it's up it'll be approximately level with the door open, so I think it's going to work just fine. So this is my idea for putting up a stop at the top because I want this table to go up and hit so that it stays parallel. And I figured as long as I'm putting something up there, why not make like a shelf up there? So I'm making a shelf. And this is my crazy idea for getting it in the right spot. I've clamped it to the end of this fold-up table. Now if I fold it up, I've got a shim in there. Give, me, give myself a quarter inch. I think this might actually work. I'll take those clamps off. And that's where my shelf needs to be. Cool trick. Beautiful. It hits right where I want it to. And hopefully this will help keep some of the dust out from inside here where, all, where the machine will be. And this bungee cord should keep it in place, one on each side. So I've got X-Carve roughly positioned on this fold-out table. And I need to hold it down some way. And I've, I've come up with these little aluminum clips that I can stick into the track here. And then, I'll, then later I'll be able to come and bolt those down. Uh, to make those, I've just bought this strip of aluminum at the local home center. And I'm going to be start by marking out my first leg. So it's going to be half an inch. I'm going to strike a line. Then I'm going to take my crescent wrench, the biggest one I have, put it on here, and then bend it up. It doesn't have to be super perfect. That looks good enough. Now I'm going to mark an inch is what I want the long leg to be. And believe it or not, I'm going to cut this with a handsaw. I know, I thought you'd never thought you'd see the day. Cool. 
Then I'm going to take it over here to the strip sander and clean it up. Lastly, I'm going to come over to the drill press here. I'm going to fit it into another crescent wrench. Let it kind of stick down in here and I'm going to drill the hole really close to this leg. There you have it, finished clip. I figure I'll need three on each side, so I'll make six. All right, so now I've drilled the hole in the table. I'm gonna put my bolt through. And that's what's gonna hold it down. I've got it all fastened down with the clamps. Now let's try putting it up. Oh, it's heavy. Yeah, would you look at that. The weight of the unit even holds it closed. Marvelous. And as promised, I will install the leveling feet. First I need to drill to install my little push nuts. Then I'm going to install the nut. And into the nut I thread my foot. So now it's time to build a little box that I can put my electronics in that dust is going to stay out of. So I've got this window fan that I purchased and I also bought some furnace filters and my idea basically is to put the furnace filter on each side with a box in the middle and the electronics go in the box. So this is the box I've come up with for holding the electronics, keeping dust out of them. I've got a hole all the way through it. So originally I was thinking about putting the fan in the front of this box and having the electronics behind it, but then I thought that's awful silly. If I want to get at the electronics I have to remove this fan somehow. So I'm actually going to put the fan all the way to the back of the box and I might lose a little efficiency being in the back instead of the front, but it still seems to work just fine when I turn on the fan and I hold the filter over it. So it's going to be a lot easier to mount it back there because it doesn't have to be removable. And for the spots where cords are going to come out, I've just taken the cord and I've kind of drawn a little circle around it. And with a coping saw, I'm going to cut that out. So now this is the, the filter bracket I made. I made kind of a dado up here for the filter to sit in. I just made it, I formed it with scrap pieces. And I made aluminum brackets down here that can be undone. So to change out the filter, I just loosen these up. I can get these out of the way. And then I just pull the filter out. I can work on the electronics, play with the, you know, change out the filter, whatever I need to do. And I just stick it back in and put the brackets back on. And here's my power supply mounted inside this dust-free box. I just use strapping to hold the power supply upside down. That way if any dust does get in, it'll settle down and it won't end up in there. Um, I've kind of got, there's two fans on the Inventables power supply and I've got one little fan in front of each of my big fans. Now I made these little crevasses here for the wire to poke through. This is the power wire for the power supply. And I'm going to staple across this joint after I put it in place. But to make sure that that staple doesn't cut into this, I'm going to find that spot and I'm going to put a big old mound of electrical tape on there. And that will also help fill the clearance between the wire and the hole. I could just take my staple gun and, and try and staple this on here, but I'm a little afraid I'll hit the wire. So I fire a staple at the ground. Now I have the staple. I'm just going to spread the tongs a little bit to span this gap. And I'm going to hammer the staple in by hand. And now on this side, I've started at X-Carve and I've used cable ties to sort of make a bundle to make these three cables into one cable. And I bundled it all the way back and you can see I have a lot of excess wire here, but I'm going to let the excess spider web of wire live inside this cabinet since there's extra space in here. So I'm going to put it through somewhere about like this, give myself a little loop up to the units so that it doesn't interfere with opening and closing and uh, should be golden. And here's a test with both the fan and the unit running. I think it's going to work fine. It's going to protect it from woodworking dust. I think I'm all set. I'm ready to start carving. And here's the 
here it is, my final X card setup. I've got the folding table down. I've mounted another piece of stock in here. I've squared the machine. I'm going to check to see if it's flat in a moment. Uh, I might need to do something where I'm going to put my laptop that runs this computer, but for now I'm clamping it to the bandsaw works. And in the corner, I mounted a power strip to the wall with my cooling equipment underneath and the X carve itself plugged into there. So when I turn up to turn on and off the machine, I turn on and off the power strip, and the stuff underneath is always on. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Craftsman David. It'll be interesting to see how I use the x carve and work it into projects in the future. I'm pretty excited about it because being an engineer, I'm used to kind of drawing things on the computer, sending them to the shop and having them made. And this will bring a lot more accuracy and I can kind of just send my, my cut jobs to this machine and I should be able to cut it out. I should be able to make some pretty cool stuff. So have a good day. Thanks for watching.